Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And you know, it seems like we're spending an inordinate amount of time in Brooklyn lately because my last few interviews have been from folks in Brooklyn. And we are here with John Fisher from CoachCub.com from Brooklyn, New York. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Yeah, it's great to be here. How, how are you? Fantastic. I don't know what it is. There's some sort of alignment of the universe that brought all of my Brooklyn interviews together in just like this such a short period of time. Good stuff comes out of Brooklyn. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's all the it's on the alignment. But no, it kind of ties in with what you do. You're um you've you've got this great business there. Um, you do a lot, but your real focus being a health and wellness coach. And yeah, just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, where to begin? I mean, basically, I went through my own journey. I think a lot of people get into coaching or get into therapy or whatever from their own issues in life. Yeah. So for me, it really came from having like a destructive childhood you know, having issues with my sexuality and finally coming out of the closet at, you know, in my early twenties yeah. at that point realizing like, I don't know how to take care of myself. Like I've never focused on my well being. So I spent the last two decades working on my mental health, my physical health. And that led me to a career change in my late twenties. I was working in politics in New York city and just my anxiety was terrible. My health was declining and I pivoted into the wellness industry and Re resigned from a job and it was one of those situations where it's like what would you do if you're not getting paid yeah and I had free time for the first time you know in years and I was just listening to podcasts about self-improvement and nutrition and was training for the New York City Marathon and it was all kind of coming together yeah. and I realized hey, maybe I can do this for a living so you know I went I headed into my 30s as a board certified health and wellness coach fantastic but you really um you you've you've got a great focus and it's also in an area that not everyone in uh, uh especially outside the LGBT community really understands or even knows happens but um you know in, in our community you really focus a lot on the bear community which is for lack of a better word just larger burlier men and uh and uh but you really focus on that other area as far as in your coaching with being body confident and uh that seems to be a a great great niche that you've kind of fallen into yeah, I love it. And I have my bears here on my shirt. You can see that. <laughs> Is this too on the nose? I have like a pink shirt on your, your podcast. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I originally, as I started my business for health coaching, I really wanted to just help men in general because I, they weren't, they're were kind of at that point, maybe in, you know, 2010 underserved in the wellness industry. I think at this point we're oversaturated with all of it, yeah. but at that point I was like, men are not being catered to. And then when I started coaching, I really started narrowing down to specifically folks in the bear community, which is like a community that I was, you know, freshly a part of. Yeah, yeah. And it's a real passion of mine, like helping people feel confident in their bodies and kind of like a health at every size approach where it's like, no matter what you look like or what your body size is, there's something you can do that feels authentic to you to just make you feel a little bit better and maybe feel a little bit more energized. So yeah, that's what, I, that's kind of the direction I went in and then I named myself coach cub, which yeah. I think is a cute name and it all kind of clicked. <laughs> it all came together, but that's the thing with coach cub. You're uh, I think a big part of it is, is that you're really good at getting you telling your story and getting the story out there through. Uh, I mean, I was, I was checking out all your social media earlier, but TikTok seems to be even your big one with all your videos. I know, which like when I first got on TikTok, my, my niece who was like, 12 at the time got me on. I'm like, I feel so old. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, so I probably stumbled around and then, yeah, I think tick, like I, I do a lot on Instagram, but I felt like TikTok, TikTok was an area that I can just showcase different parts of me and kind of have more fun. Yeah. Uh, Cause I wasn't taking it too seriously. So I think I started creating a lot of content. Maybe that resonates. Cause I just, yeah. you know, I didn't, it didn't need to be so polished. Yeah, exactly. You were being yourself. And I think that, I think that really came through and, uh, but then it great gives you a great opportunity because not only are you able to kind of get tell your story and get the word out about health and wellness coach work, but you're doing a lot in Portugal and you've got the Camp Bear Hug and tell us about that. Yeah. So it's kind of the direction my business went in. I was coaching one-on-one -on -one and really loving that. And then I started at first just a meetup group in actually in Brooklyn. Uh, it was like a gay men's farmer's market group. So it was just something I wanted to do, like go to farmer's markets, have picnics, that type of thing. And that led to different services. So we added on like bear yoga and then cuddle piles, which this is a cuddle yep. pile hoodie. Yep. Um, and I did that for years and I really loved it. And then 
during COVID, I had the opportunity to take all that work and create a retreat in Portugal. Um, I had somebody from there reach out to me asking me to to come and help him put, put this on. So we turned it into Camp Bear Hug and we're going on our third year now. Wow. Well, I love that because then I was uh, checking out the, not only do you do that, but you also even have wine and bear in Porto and I've been to Porto and I've actually, uh, my husband and I rented a car and we drove up and, and went to one of the wineries there. And it's, it's, it's a big thing in that area. Yeah. It's a gorgeous region like the Douro Valley. And it's great that, that you went there. Um, yeah. I I've had good friends from there for the last like 20 years. So I've been going to Portugal since like way before anyone cared about it or, you know, it became trendy. Yeah. And so for me, I'm really passionate about showing off the country to folks. I find it's a really good place. Like it's beautiful and it's, the energy is really kind of calm and slow. Like it's a perfect place for a retreat. Um, and the men tend to look kind of bearish there anyway. So it's kind of, it all kind of fits really it's perfect, well. It's a perfect combination. Well, I also loved when I saw the video where you, you do the NOLA food tour. And I actually lived in New Orleans for a year. So and I was picturing where the video is being you know, filmed. I was like, I think I know exactly where that is. That That's too funny. Yeah. And that's something where like my chef came to Port. Yeah, I, I hired a chef for each of my Portugal retreats. And I had a chef, um, John Harrison, yeah. who is a Southern chef, really cool guy. And he came to Portugal. He loved it. And he said, we should do this in New Orleans. So like, I just kind of go with the flow. It's like when cool opportunities present, present themselves. And I like connecting with people who are lying to me, like people who are really supportive and have integrity. So he said, let's go to New Orleans and do a food tour. So I was like, I've never been, let's do it. So uh, yeah, we're putting that on May 6th to the 9th. So it's like a bear food tour experience in uh, New Orleans. Yeah. You've got some great stuff. Uh, it was interesting when I was reading one of the one of the interviews of you. Um, uh, there was a connection. Uh, somebody talked to or asked you about Easton Mountain because we've actually interviewed some folks that uh, have done presentations and lectures there, and that's kind of like the. Uh, it's a great way for folks like yourself to kind of all get together and I feel like take these conversations conversations to the next level. But you've been a part of that as well. Yeah, I'm fr I'm pretty close with um, Freddie Freeman and Jay, his husband, who kind of like run the show up at East End and they, they do something called Barrier Soul, which is, yeah. Um, yeah, really influential for me. Like I, I went up and I facilitated classes for them. And that's what I think when I saw firsthand, just the power of what a retreat can do, you know, like when you bring people together, create a really safe container and let people let their guards down, like how transformational it can be. Yeah, yeah. And when I went up to do uh, facilitating, I didn't expect to participate much and kind of like the broader stuff. And I found myself in workshops crying and working through things. And when I left, I said, oh my God, I didn't even realize I had all this to work on. But I think when you're in that environment, finally where you can relax, it's like, okay, you know, I'm supported, I'm meeting cool people and I can do some self-reflective work. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I love it up there. And uh, they've definitely influenced all of the work I do in New York City and with my, my camp. Yeah, that's very cool. And we were talking about your social media and I guess even wrapping up the, you also, you do a podcast as well. And it seems like you've been doing that for quite a while, even under different names. Yes, I'm trying. And as you know, it's like, it's a lot of work to keep it going. So for me, it was like a COVID um, project. Yeah. And I did, I think around 10 of them. And then I kind of sat for a little while and I revived it with the name uh, Belly Talk because- okay. The, the Facebook community I run and the class I run in New York City, I use the word belly. It's like the belly club. Yeah. So this is just an extension of, you know, the conversations that go on in our Facebook group and in our classes, especially as it relates to body image and mental health and, and physical well-being. Well, very cool. I think it's amazing. Like I said, what you're doing, I loved, uh, I loved being introduced to you and also discovering all the work you've been doing. And uh and mostly I'm just really glad you were able to kind of take a few moments and share a bit of your story with our audience here. Oh my God. It's I'm, I'm very much honored. Like it's, it's great. And I love, you know, everything you're doing and the, the fact that you love travel and it's like, I don't know, there's a whole world out there. And I, my whole mission is like, let's all help each other to feel good and support each other, especially in the queer community and specifically the bear community, yeah. because it's like these spaces are where we're supposed to feel safe and we don't always necessarily feel like we're not getting judged if we're in these spaces. So I'm trying to create um, scenarios where people can actually feel supported and feel like they belong somewhere. 
Um, and hopefully that ripples out and we can all help each other heal. That's like my, my grand mission. <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I, I only live two hours outside of New York now. So, uh, um, I do get to New York and Brooklyn quite often. So, uh, next time I'm there, I'll let you know, it'd be great to meet up in the real world. I know you can get a coffee or you can come to a cuddle pile, whatever, whatever's, you know, floats your boat. I'd like that. But well, great meeting you here. Thank you so much. And it feels good, so good.